What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the home theater hobbyist. Today, I wanna to talk to you about these speakers right here, the Arundel Sound 1961 Towers or Floor Standing Speakers. Now, before I get into this, there's a couple things I wanna say and you wanna pay attention to this. First of all, these speakers are a part of the entire 1961 series, which includes a monitor, a center channel, a bookshelf, some high speakers, a couple of subwoofers, and sealed and vented. So it's got an entire lineup of speakers. You can go check it out in the links below. Now, as I record this, these prices are the cheapest they're probably ever going to be because Arendelle has already said on their website, the prices on this series is going to go up on December 20th, 2022. The prices are going to go up by as much as 15 percent so i don't know what the new prices are going to be but these are going to go up so if you're even considering buying this series of speakers and it's before december 20th 2022 use those links in the description below to go ahead and buy them okay because the prices are going to go up so just use those links and you can buy a pair from this line and honestly i'm going to tell you right now i do recommend them so go ahead and buy your pair and the good news is they're increasing the warranty from five years to 10 years on the 1961 series that's for new buyers and previous uh purchasers as well and you get a 60-day trial period in your home so again you can feel comfortable just going ahead clicking those links buying the speakers and trying them out in your home because a they sound good and i'll talk about that in a minute but b the prices will go up after december 20th i don't know what the new prices will be but they say up to 15 percent Okay, so I've gotten that out of the way. Now let's talk about why I recommend these speakers. Um, a few months ago, I had an opportunity to review the uh, 1723S line from a rental sound, and I enjoyed those speakers, especially when watching movies. I thought they sounded fantastic, had a nice neutral sound presentation. Uh, but the only drawback that I saw with those speakers was they were actually kind of large. I was reviewing the monitor speakers, and I was like, wow, these are big. They have six and a half inch drivers, but they have an even bigger monitor with eight inch drivers known as the 1723 and for some people they just can't fit that size speaker in their room well the first thing that i like about these speakers is they are smaller these are the towers they're on my floor i'm sitting in a folding chair and you can see i can just put my arms on them just like that because these are relatively small they're only about 34 inches tall with the spikes on them they're about six inches wide and as you can see they're about 11 inches deep so these are not big speakers at all and i think that is a plus because some people just can't fit big speakers in their room and unlike the 1723 or the 1723s these are much smaller so if you have a family room or a bedroom a second room a garage and you just want some nice speakers in there that don't take up too much room definitely look at these towers because these are very nice speakers but although they are small, they have that same solid high build quality that I think of when I think of like the 1723S because they use high density fiberboard for the construction of the cabinet. So it is extremely quiet. In fact, let me tap on them with my knuckles so you can just hear how these cabinets sound. <laughs> they are solid. I mean, very solid they weigh like 40 pounds um and honestly they kind of remind me of let's say the mercedes-benz uh, door closing from like the 70s 80s 90s they may still do it today but i know they did it back then which is you close the door and it would clunk i mean it was a solid door close these are solid like that and i like that because again you get a nice quiet cabinet you don't have to worry about resonance uh interfering with the sound from your drivers because they are solidly built but they also come with floor spikes as i mentioned so you can have them nice and stable on your carpet but you can also uh, put the little disc under the spikes to protect your hardwood floors if you have hardwood floors or you can use little rubber pucks that they put in the box that you can mount directly to the speaker to protect your hardwood floors now as far as colors are concerned they come in this matte black or a matte, matte white surface finish so you can put them in whatever room that you know kind of matches that if you want and they do have magnetic grills but these grills are kind of interesting because they are actually two piece you just pull them off just like that and they are good to go but you have another piece down here that you can pull off as well and that's kind of interesting and they've got that arendal logo down there as well but again they just snap on and snap on and there you go 
So that is why I like these speakers because they are smaller than the 1723 or the 1723S line. So if you are space constrained, you have an option from Arendel and it gets you that Arendel build quality, but also that Arendel sound quality. These have that same neutral sound that the 1723S line has. They're not quite as dynamic as those, but they have that same neutral sound and they have a nice wide stereo image. I was listening to these two speakers and I was really surprised when watching movies, just how wide they got. Watching those scenes in um, Ford versus Ferrari when they're in the race at the end of the movie and they've you know got a lot of just surround going on. I got those effects from these movies. Was it the same as having side speakers and rear speakers? No, it wasn't that wide, but it did give a nice wide soundstage and things were placed pretty much where they're supposed to be placed. And one of the things that I found that I was actually really impressed with is the fact that the tweeters actually sound right with these speakers. And I say that because if you notice the tweeters down here, I'm sitting in a folding chair. My ears are up here. So these tweeters are not at ear level, but these speakers are raked back. If you can tell right here, they're kind of raked back a little bit and that allows them to project out into the room. So the sound hits your ear at your normal listening position when you're sitting, you know, five, six, seven feet away, however far you are away from your speaker. So they actually hit you in the right spot. And again, I was a little bit concerned that, you know, again, since these are lower, they might not hit right for height effects. So I checked that out with a couple of movies, including Kong Skull Island chapter four, where the helicopters come in, dum, 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 dum. Um, they gave great height effects, um, not quite at most speakers, but still great height effects. Same thing with No Time to Die, the scene where James Bond gets into the square and the bells are ringing overhead. Again, really nice height effects with these speakers, even though the tweeters are a little bit lower than a traditional tweeter would be with this design. So I think they've done a great job there. And as far as the sound quality, the detail is concerned from the 1961s with the tweeter, I have to say that it actually does a really good job. You get a nice clean presentation from the tweeter. And I think it's because the cabinets are so well damped. You don't have any extra cabinet resonances kind of screwing around with the tweeter sound, uh, at least as far as I can tell when I'm listening to them. They're actually pretty neutral and it's nice and detailed. Um, some of you may be asking, well, how do these compare to, let's say, the Heiko Auroras that you reviewed? Because I like those for movies as well. And the first thing I'll say is it's not truly a fair comparison because the Heiko Aurora 1000s are like eight or $900 and these are, you know, $1,700. So it's not really fair, but I'll talk about them here. Um, again, as far as tweeters concerned, I have to say that these are a bit more neutral, whereas those Heiko Auroras in the tweeters lean just a little bit bright. They're not harsh, but they do lean a little bit bright. I also find that the tweeter image from these is just a little bit cleaner again, because I think the cabinets are a little bit better damped than those Heiko Auroras. As far as the mid range is concerned, they both do a great Great job in the mid range, give you nice neutral mid range. Again, a little bit cleaner because the towers are a little bit, or excuse me, the cabinets are a little bit better with the 1961s, but you get a nice mid range from both of the speakers. And as far as the bass is concerned, the bass in the 1961s is tight and it is punchy and that's with it ported. I ran it most of the time with ported, but you can seal it and it'll clean up the base just a little bit. But even with it um, being ported, it had a nice tight bass performance. And I like that, especially when listening to music. Um, I have to say that when watching movies, I wish it had just a little bit more bass and I could feel the bass in my chest. So when watching movies, I would definitely add a subwoofer with these particular speakers. But how does it compare to the Aurora 1000s? Well, I have to say the Aurora 1000s do a little bit better job because they have eight inch drivers and these are five, five and a quarter inch uh, type drivers. So they're a little bit smaller, but um, they do a good job, especially with music. But with movies, I wish it just had a little bit more. Another thing that I like about these speakers is where they set the crossover. They set it at a point where there is a nice smooth transition from the tweeter to the mid range and into the bass. You don't have any steps or anything like that when it's actually transitioning between the different frequencies. So I like that a lot. And that's something that I noticed when I was listening to these. Also, while I was watching movies, I watched a lot of movies, uh, two channel movies like Tremors. I have that in 4K. That's one of my favorite monster movies. Also watched the latest A Christmas Story in 4K. I just bought that. And both of them sound really good just to channel listening to these speakers and I have to say it kind of reminded me of why some people are like you know what I just I don't even have a multi-channel setup I just go with two channels because that's all I really need and with these 
you can almost kind of get away with it because the image is so wide. But personally, I do recommend going with a center channel and surrounds, mainly because it gives you a much bigger sound stage and things can really be placed where they're supposed to be placed. Now, obviously I didn't get a chance to try out a center or surrounds, but based on my um, 1723S experience, I have to say that I'm going to assume here that a rental has done a great job matching the center performance and the surround speaker, the bookshelf speaker, or even monitor speakers with these so you would get a nice surround stage. And that brings me on to music. I've spent a lot of time sitting down listening to these in a nice two channel setup. And again, you get a nice neutral sound that's nice and balanced throughout the frequency range, which is nice. Vocalists are locked in the center where they're supposed to be. And you can have a band member or a guitar playing on the left or on the right, and it sounds really good. There's also a lot of height to the image. But one thing I wish it had a little bit or did a little bit better, I should say, is I wish it had more depth to the image. Um, actually, I had the same sort of complaint about the Heiko Roars as well, is I wish it just had just a little Little bit more depth to the image. Now, I did compare these to the Q Acoustics Concept 50s, which I just reviewed. Now, this isn't a totally fair comparison because those Concept 50s are like $3,000 for the pair, and these are more like $1,700 or something like that, at least as I'm recording this. Um, so they're not quite a fair comparison, but I will say that I found that these have more height than the Concept 50s, but the Concept 50s have more depth to the image. So the Concept 50s have multiple layers of depth, whereas I would say these have kind of like two layers of depth to them. Them. And with that multiple layers of depth, I found that it was just a little bit more realistic listening to music with the Concept 50s. I enjoyed live concerts a little bit more with the Concept 50s compared to the 1961s. These do a good job. They, you know, it's popular music, stuff like that. You're going to enjoy yourself, right? But if you want a little bit more image or depth to your image, I would go with like the Concept 50s. In fact, let me play a quick audio sample just so you can hear the difference between the two speakers. Overall, I think these are great pair of speakers, especially when watching movies. They're neutral, they're balanced, they're dynamic, the cabinets are quiet, um, there's a lot of height to the image. It's just really, really fun to watch movies and listen to these speakers. Now, I will say, add a subwoofer to get you that, you know, bass feeling that you want in your chest and stuff like that, but I do think these are really good, even in a two-channel setup. But I recommend going with a center, some bookshelves, because again, based on my 1723S experience, I think you're going to have a great time with a multi-channel setup with these speakers. They're great. They're small. So if you have, you know, tighter constraints on uh, where you can put speakers and stuff like this, these will work. So if you want to purchase these or anything else, use those links in the description below. Don't forget, December 20th, 2022, the prices will go up. How much? I don't know, but they will go up. So go ahead and purchase them now because it does help support the channel. So thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time.